Hello YouTube, uh, got another unboxing video and again it's another Engage Dapol model. So this is uh, my second uh, Engage model I bought this year. Uh, I got it a couple of months ago actually, just uh, haven't had a chance to do anything with it because uh, I had my uh, little accidents and work on my arm and stuff. So uh, I'm just uh, going to try and get through them while I've got the track set up off the uh, the train set I've done a review on before. Um, so that's basically how it comes, packaged up. Uh, nice plastic case and the foam packaging. I think it's pretty, there's literally two of these left in Hattons. So I thought, you know, I've got to grab it while it's there. Um, because uh, I want to do a little engage layout and uh, eventually I'll do a, a video of me engage collections that I've had sat in the loft for years so I'll hope to get them out sometime basically this is what comes with the uh, paperwork so it just shows you how to uh, service it and uh, also instructions and uh, fitting the light bar there's a light bar socket and uh, fitting your DCC so, I mean, looking at the, the last set I got, the DAPL instructions are nice and simple and easy to follow. So that's it, uh, and that's uh, an O'Quibble 24 month mechanical warranty. So hopefully I won't need that, but that's handy either way. Um, just take a little look at the, uh, the engine. So it's class 142, Northern Rail, 142065. And it's designed to fit around the minimum radius 9 inch curves, which is what this is here. Um, 18 inch diameter oval. And uh, just see if we can uh, get this out. So, first look, it looks very, very nice, very detailed on the outside. And I like, really like the uh, Northern Rail livery. Now, I'm not too sure. To get this out safely so I'm just going to try that and just try and like I said I bought it a while ago but I've not actually got it out of the box at all yet so just put that down that's one car so it's, it certainly doesn't look like you get any damage on this if you threw the box all over the floor because it's really well really well packaged and uh, nicely displayed as well so that's basically it. So it looks uh, it looks stunning. It looks a lot more detailed than the uh, the Hornby version. Anyway, in double O, considering it's twice the size, Horm uh, double O Hornby looks uh, stunning. That now I'm not sure exactly how long we've been waiting for these to come out, but. Basically, I've had my double O layout in the loft now for about just under five years. And before that, I had a little N-gauge layout because I never had room for double O. And I was waiting for these to come out for that layout. So that just shows how long a process they've been in development for. And they eventually come out and I thought, you know what, I've got, I've got to have one because I wanted one. And uh, I've got, like I say, I've got so much N-gauge stuff in storage that I want to... Uh, do some with it and have a bit of a layout. Also comes with this. I think these are like American style knuckle couplers. So I doubt I'll use them, but that looks like some sort of uh, bit of detail that probably goes underneath the engine. The only downside I can actually see, I mean, this is the motor car and it is quite heavy for the size of it. So it uh, won't have any problem, any trouble pulling, even on an incline, I'd say. But again, very detailed, working light as well. It's very hard to like appreciate it on a camera, really, just how detailed it is. The only downside that's pretty obvious is um, there's no interior to this model. There's no interior seating. You can actually see what looks like the motor there. On the inside so yeah, I don't think lighting up the interior would probably be a great idea because you will be able to see everything inside but I mean with N-Gage how small it is and once it's running around the layout would you really see inside 
So, um, the other like sort of sad thing is as well. I mean, I've always had a soft spot for these engines. I know a lot of people don't like them. I always remember um, when I was a kid and I'd go on the train to uh, Liverpool City Centre. Got the train from Kirby. I always remember seeing these on the opposite platform going down towards Wigan. And um, I never actually went on one since I was 16, but um, just like a little bit of history to them. Uh, I think 96 of these were built, um, two have been scrapped, and um, I think the nickname was uh, Nodding Donkey because of the uh, the bumpy rides. And especially right when you go down to like Carnforth and you see them coming into the station, you, you have a really loud uh, squeal, so the flying squeal, and they go around sharp curves. I mean, that's due to um, the fact that when you see these, most of these are rail cars have a set of bogies, so it's uh, four wheels, and so two of these only have two wheels. So I think they do struggle on uh, sharp curves. And I think they have a maximum speed of about. Um, 75 miles per hour although uh, I don't I have no idea if they reach that speed or not I mean when I've been on them they probably average about 40 or 50 miles per hour at the most um, yeah and uh, like you say the sad thing is they're due to be scrapped by uh, December this year um, I don't I presume one probably gets saved for the National Railway Museum maybe maybe a couple of heritage railways will take them on because I don't think their life expired. I think it's I'm not too sure what. I think it's part of uh, a new rule where they need this disability access on the carriages. I'm not too sure how, how it works, but I think it's, it's basically um, the struggling for um, disability access. And uh, by the end of this year, uh, they'll no longer be able to work on the railway without being upgraded. So I think the decision has been taken to uh, not bother upgrading them, but replacing them with newer diesel rail car multiple units, or um, just uh, they might acquire them off other lines and they're getting upgraded instead. Um, so, so without getting too uh, boring, I'll uh, do a little um, running session. And uh, I say, I, I presume, so you've got metal connections between the two, so I presume the dummy picks up for the motor car as well, which hopefully improves reliability. So I think it's just a simple case of push these two together like that. And that's it, voila. And it also looks like you can comfortably, uh, with these knuckle couplers, connect up a, a second rail car together. Because quite often they are, if they do run together, I've seen, especially by where I live, I've seen class 142s connected to a 153 or even a 150. Uh, and they run together when it's more like peak hours. So uh, let's just give it a run and see what it's like. That's very smooth, that. Just bump up the speed a little bit. I suppose, like, technically I'm supposed to... Uh, let it run in properly first, but for the sake of the video, we'll just uh, give it a little run in for slower speeds. That's, that's uh, very impressive, that. And it's not too loud, really, either. I mean, the track's only just bare on the table, so I'll just make the sound a bit noisier than it would normally on the layout as well. And the model has directional lighting, front and back. We just slow it down and uh, try it the other way. Yeah, I think that's stunning. That for an engaged model. And um, like I mentioned before, I plan on doing a little engaged layout, and it'll probably be. A similar track plan to what we've got here. Um, I've actually got a drawing for uh, a layout and I'll do that on another video. But basically I'll do a little maybe three foot by two foot layout just so I can run 
main gauge trains and uh, it'll basically be perfect for a little engine like this or the train set I reviewed before yeah I'm uh, well impressed with that uh, if I had the money I'd probably buy the uh, buy another one but I'll have to stick with this for now because I can't really justify buying too much engage gauge when I've got big double O gauge layouts so uh, I'll uh, run around for a bit, I'll give it a good run in and um, I'll do a comparison to the double O gauge equivalent that I've got. Hello again YouTube, uh, just to give an example of the size of N gauge, the double O, I've got my uh, double O gauge model out of the loft. Uh, this one's had a lot of upgrades, it's got interior lighting, front and tail lights. It's got the um, the main sign is like working. It's also got DCC sound, and uh, I think it was only my second sound model. This one, so it's one of my favourites. Again, I've got in double O. If you've seen one of my previous videos, I've actually got a class one four two running session where I've got virtually every model running apart from the Reva trains one. That's the only one I haven't. Uh, been able to acquire yet and um, someone told me that maybe real track or um, rapido um, or I don't know if they're working together they've planned on making a class 142 so that'd be interesting if they are those uh, like the paces but uh, yeah just to give you an idea of size difference You can see the amount of detail in the N gauge model compared to the Hornby version. I'd say the, the N gauge one is more detailed externally. A lot more detailed. But obviously the only thing that lets it down is the interior. So anyway, I hope uh, it was interesting for someone and uh, I'll uh, try and do a few more of these reviews. Um, I say I'm going to do an N gauge unboxing video sometime with uh, my collection get them all out on the table and uh, hopefully get started on then gauge layout soon so uh, thanks again for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next video thanks